You're on YouTube tomorrow now. Kinda sort of. Anyway. I'll talk to I'll talk to you guys in a while. Like after my live stream. What's up? Go green, go box. Yep, I agree, Al. Knock out some corn. Rain is pouring here in York, Pennsylvania. So uh, we had some snow showers. I've been calling it um, snowy rain or rainy snow or something like that on my video all day. It's, it's not really snowing, but it's not really raining kind of thing. Uh, but right here at Berkey, where we're at right now, it's not too bad. So uh, we did have a little bit of rain earlier, but it's dried off. It's quit raining. And, we're shelling corn. We had like 73, 74 acres to do in this field that uh, we're gonna try and get it done. I don't know if we will actually get it done, but uh, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. How's the new combine working? New combine is actually working really well right now. Um, so you guys might notice that since we've gotten the new combine, I haven't had to stop for little minor breakdowns very often, right? That's why we got a new combine. We don't have those bearings going out, the oil leaks, the wear stuff happening. The combine is running smoothly. We're finally getting stuff dialed in. The yield monitor is pretty accurate, I think. Um, uh, we were checking yield losses when we started this field. The ag was running and I got out and looked and we're, we're, we're dialing it in real close. Things are running quite well. So uh, yeah, combine is good. Corn is good. Everything is good right now. Hello from Illinois. How is your harvest going for you guys today? Yeah, so we got a little bit of a late start today on harvest. Let's see, it's 12.30. We started here probably, I don't know, 11, 11.30, somewhere in there. Um, Dad did a little ripping. He brought the ripper down here to Berkey and got started on a field while I had some stuff to take care of back at home. Um, and once I got down here, we started shelling. Phil's been hauling dry corn. Things are going well. You're missing the buck wolverines today. I don't know what buck wolverines are, but they're playing Penn State, and I was watching a little bit ago. They're losing. I figured now's the right time to do this live stream because nobody gives a crap about the Michigan game. So we'll do it before Ohio State and Michigan State play later this afternoon. At least that's the theory. So I am running grain cart today. Dad's in the combine. I'll let you guys watch him for a second while I talk. Um, we are in some very, very good corn. And uh, so we're running the cart. We've got to start dumping clear on this end and keep dumping all the way across the field. We're not quite half mile long rows here because of where we're at behind our uh, building site bins there. But yeah. It's going, it's going, it's going. All right, where are we at? Canada, UK, I mean the Lions and the Wolverines. Yes, that one. Gotcha, Heath. Uh, we got four inches of snow in Caledonia. No kidding. Wow. So Caledonia's up by Grand Rapids, Michigan. <coughs> I've been there. Um, it's not far enough north to have four inches of snow already. I imagine there's some lake effect involved there. It looked like there was quite a bit of snow in southwest Michigan. Or at least it's been there for a while, so they might be getting some accumulation too. We don't need that yet. They were calling for more tomorrow. I'm hoping that we can get this field of corn done today, although it's, it's unlikely, but it is possible. Um, but the less corn we have standing that gets snowed down, the better. So we're going to do as much as we can here today. South Jersey, it's supposed to start raining there soon. How many acres till harvest is done? Yeah, um, <coughs> let me do a little quick math. So, uh, not counting the field that we're in now, we'll be done in Berkey. So we've just got some back up to Waldron. So we've got um, 128 in one field, 30 in a field, 65, Uh, 72 and about 
about 10 and we're going to call it 55. So that's about 360 of corn after today. And we've got 60 left in this field. We also have 70 acres of double crop beans that need to be run yet, but those are very low priority. So somewhere in that 400-ish range of harvest left to go. We're getting there. Hello from Ontario. <laughs> Does Zach's experience with a strip till bar make you hesitant to try it? A little, but not because of the problems he had, mostly because of the sticky ground conditions. Because I think we have somewhat similar soil types. He's got much more deeper topsoil, but we're sticky clay. And so the problems that he had in a wet year are the problems that I'm going to have in a wet year. And we're not as wet every fall as they are. Some years we do have dry falls and it would work really well. Part of Zach's problem was he was trying to do too much. Trying to add that ammonia pass and putting nitrogen on with the P and the K, it's just too much. you got too many things going on, too much to watch. And while he had a really nice strip till bar, I just think it was, it was overkill for what he's trying to do. And uh, I think there are better options out there. I still want to try it, um, but it's too wet now. It's we're gonna have to wait until next year and it's something I should probably look at closer um, for after wheat harvest and doing that you know in our wheat stubble in September when it usually is dry enough to do so do you normally work bean stubble and why yes so we normally will do heavy tillage in bean stubble that is going to be planted to corn same as our wheat stubble. Anything getting planted to corn next year, we want to run our ripper through and do our primary tillage pass. Uh, corn is the, 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 the crop that is most sensitive to compaction, that we fight it the worst, that can't compensate for it, and so we want to try to eliminate compaction in next year's corn crop. I gotta unload, hold on. my first day. Well, that was embarrassing. What the heck? Had to be live, too. The good thing is, these trucks are going from where they're at to right there. So, it doesn't matter if they're overloaded. I would like to keep all of the corn in the truck though. Uh, this corn's pretty dry, 18%, and so it flows different than wet corn, and it kind of splashes down and I spilled something. It happens. All right, there was a super chat. It's next. I want to read it. David, it's you every time, man. You don't have to do that, but I certainly appreciate it. Thank you very much. Appreciate you watching all the videos. Netherlands, hi, hi, hi. Jackson, welcome. Germany, Sweden, Ontario, Canada, Tennessee. Good afternoon. Did you get the electrical problem fixed on the small dryer? No, haven't done anything to it. We're going to not worry about it because we don't need to. We, all we've got to do is finish this field of corn and uh, we'll be done. We can use the other dryer and haul in some wet corn and we will address it later. I don't think it's a quick, easy fix. Um, Hans, I'm not sure if it was you who suggested that I get an uh, amp meter and put on it. That's a good idea. We probably will do that at some point uh, just to see what our amp draw is. But I still think that breaker is bad. And 
just a hunch, I don't know this, but I'm guessing that the breakers aren't made anymore or it's going to be really hard to find one to fit in there. And I don't know if it's like a normal circuit breaker and a regular breaker panel where you can pull the breaker out so you can take the wires out without it being live and hot or if it's something that is bolted in and you got to take the lugs out and they're hot and if that's the case then the meter's got to get pulled and it's a whole deal so we're just gonna not mess with it right now it's a saturday nobody's gonna come out and work on it we're gonna get done and be done <sighs> all right where are we at ireland we're not in ireland but welcome thanks for watching how's your dad doing with the new combine you always say he isn't too fond of it. No, I don't know that I've ever said he isn't too fond of it. I just have made a comment that he's not super impressed by it. Like, it's, I mean, for me, it's awesome. This is a new combine. Holy crap, yes, let's go. This is sweet. He's just like, yeah, it's a new combine, whatever. But he's doing fine. He's uh, figuring stuff out. The computer was a little bit of a learning curve for him, and he calls me on the radio when he needs help with something. But he's figuring it out and getting it dialed in. You're not late, Wayne. We're just getting rolling. Uh, that's surprising. We didn't even get a half inch in Hastings. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't make stuff up on here because somebody else lives where you do and you're, they're going to call you out if you're off. Uh, not that I'm questioning whether you had four inches of snow or not there in Caledonia. But yeah, Hastings isn't too far away. Uh, I know it's early, but what are your plans for next year in dealing with white mold on the beans that you had this year? Yep. So, um, First of all, white mold is not a huge issue for us most of the time. We do see white mold occasionally or maybe frequently, uh, but usually it's a pretty small problem. And I don't know, I don't know how much it cost us this year. It definitely hurt, but how much? And it's tough to say. But how much money and time and effort do we put into controlling something that sometimes it's a problem, sometimes it's not, and you have no idea whether it's going to be next year or not. And you have to decide before you know whether or not it's a problem. You can't treat it once you see it. You gotta do it ahead of time. And even then it's iffy on whether the control is there. So we're not doing a lot. One thing that I have decided to do and I bought is some uh, seed treatment that I can add when I'm treating beans next spring that is specifically for white mold, sun death syndrome. Um, but it's the only product I've ever seen labeled to actually have activity on white mold. So. Uh, we're going to try some of that. We're probably going to use a lot of it because it's pretty cheap, relatively, and it gives you some other benefits as well. Um, so we'll see how that works, but that's my that's my plan. Just came past you guys, could have brought you some Chick-fil-A. Now see, now, now, you, that would have been nice. I haven't had any lunch. I was thinking about sending Jack to get me a pizza or something. Hello from North Carolina. Raining in cold water. Yeah, Jason, it was raining at Waldron today when I left there too, or snow raining. Uh, when do you think house will be ready to move in? So I am anticipating end of January right now. Um, we're a little behind schedule. We were scheduled to get in in December initially, but kind of fell behind right from the beginning waiting on the concrete guys and never caught up. Drywall got done later than they thought it was going to, which sets everything else back from there. So uh, I'm anticipating it to be right at the end of January. How many acres do you plan on trying to till before the freeze? Uh, as many as we can get done probably. So, like I said earlier, we want to do the heavy tillage on all of the ground that will be planted to corn next year. Now, we've got a significant amount of that done, including the stuff we planted cover crops in, you know, a month and a half ago, two months ago. Um, so, we don't have all that much to do there, but we do have a fair amount that needs to get done. Probably, I would say, six to eight hundred acres of uh, primary tillage. And we haven't done any of this yet, but I would like to disc some corn stalks, uh, hook up that land all. Now that we're done planting wheat, we can hook that up to the 8430, get that air seeder unhooked, and uh, start disking some corn stalks. Um, right now it's a logistics issue, and we just don't have the people to do it, to run the stuff. 
Um, but we're, we're getting close to wrapping up harvest, and then usually we can spend a good solid week wrapping up the tillage after that. So I think we'll get there. Uh, we've got time yet before we freeze solid, and hopefully the ground conditions keep improving. Brock says you're going to need a shovel. Why do I need a shovel? Why does Brock say I need a shovel? Uh, I don't know. Everyone can make a mistake. I don't get it. What are we talking about? Oh, oh, that's way back to when I spilled corn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks guys. No problem. Way to call me out on that. <laughs> there wasn't enough to need a shovel. <laughs> uh, better get some sleep. Sounds like you're getting sick. I'm actually just getting over it. Uh, my boys have been sick this week and I've kind of been coughing a little bit, but talking for an hour straight doesn't help, which is why I got the Gatorade and a bottle of water sitting here. Central Minnesota, Turkey, snowing in Imlay City, Michigan. Greetings from Hampton Roads, Virginia, South Africa. Man, you guys are from all over the place. Are you using GPS on the green cart? Yeah, we're using GPS. You think I can drive and read questions like this? All I got to do is make sure my speed's right and that the corn is going in the cart. And it is. The other day when I was flying the drone, I was doing this and flying a drone. That was difficult. The only time I spilled any was when I made that pass underneath the auger between the cart and the combine. I was more focused on the drone than I was the green cart at that point. I got a little ahead of him. All right, let's see if we can not spill any this time. How much do you guys have left to harvest? Yep, so we're sitting right about 400 acres left, which is not too bad. I won't open the gate up all the way this time. Corn must be a little lighter. It says I only got 51,000 pounds in there. That's a short trailer, so uh, it doesn't hold. You can't haul 80,000 with it. It doesn't hold that much anyway. Uh, but I should be able to get 54 on there at least. And I guess I could have gotten a little more. It's not clear full. Full enough. All right. How's that new pickup? Man, I really like that pickup. My Ram that I bought this spring to 2020, I'm up to about 17,000 miles on it. It is a really nice truck. Uh, it's fancier than what I need, but yeah, it's, it's, it's nice. I like it a lot. It gets better gas mileage than my Chevy. It, uh, <laughs> it's, just, it's just more comfortable and nicer. I mean, it's top of the line, so. Uh, any more new equipment coming to the farm we should know about? Well, stock stompers for the corn head, but I already told you about that one. Nothing else that I can think of right now. 
Uh, once we get through harvest, we'll look at stuff again and re-evaluate, re analyze finances and equipment needs and what we think we need to do. Um, but I have no nothing lined up or purchased or bought or anything. So a new tractor is getting to be a top, top of the priority list, but we're not there yet, I don't think. Um, plus, we just bought a combine, so that's a major purchase already this year. So. We'll see. We have had pretty decent crops, and the opportunity to do something might be there. But we've also already upgraded a lot of stuff in the last year. I mean, so in, in the last year, we bought that new anhydrous bar. We got a new seed tender. We got that air seeder. I bought a new pickup truck. We got a new combine, new draper head. What else? That might be it. But that's six different items. That's a lot. A lot of them were smaller, not super expensive stuff, but um, still. Okay, Sweden. Hey, Trevor, we just headed to the field south of Pioneer. Started and got too wet. Wind is blowing, so can go now. Good. How you guys coming, Trevor? You got to be making progress. I saw you got the beans done, so that's good. A lot of farmers here in the thumb, no-till wheat into bean ground. How about your area? Yeah, all the wheat is no-till. We very rarely will work any ground going to be planted two wheat. Um, only time we do is if we have some ruts or uh, issues that we need to level it off before we plant it. So, um, yeah, most of the time that's no-till. And we will no-till beans. We like to run the vertical tillage tool, the, that disc over it, mostly to chop up the stalks and manage the residue and knock that stuff down makes a little bit nicer seed bed, but we can no-till um, if we need to or want to. Will you demo an X9? Sure, you gonna bring it? Sometimes I think you guys, YouTube viewers in general, because you watch Zach and Brian who seem to get demos for everything, think that all the farmers just can, you know, get a demo of whatever they want anytime they want. It doesn't work like that. Like. That planter that we demoed this spring was the first time I ever remember a demo showing up on our farm that they would just let me use. And that was for 50 acres. I mean, I, it's not like I can call my John Deere dealer up and say, hey, I'm thinking about buying an X9, why don't you bring me one out to try? They don't have one, first of all, and it doesn't, that, that's just not realistic. And, uh, you know, it's the same thing with tracks on a combine or something like that. Like. There were a lot of guys around here that did find tracks to put on their combines, but it's not like I can just go to the dealer and be like, hey, get me a set of tracks for my combine. I need them next, you know, tomorrow. That doesn't work. Or a track tractor. When I was talking about my compaction issues in that plot that I did, uh, you guys had a lot of comments about trying to uh, get getting a, a track tractor to rent and try it and stuff. Well, they don't exist around here. I, they're not sitting on dealers' lots where I can just go, be like, hey, bring that out for the day. There aren't any. There aren't any 8RXs around that we could demo or try. They, you know, you have to be, you have to have something available and your dealer has to be willing to let you use it in order to get a demo. So, um, demos are infrequent and not something we do a lot. Um, maybe if I had 100,000 subscribers and the companies wanted me to demo stuff for the exposure, then maybe I would get some. So hit the subscribe button and have, make that happen for me, would you? Trinidad. Wow, we got people from all over the world watching. That's awesome. Except for China. Never seen anybody comment from China. Uh, why don't you run vertical tillage? Uh, not so much a disc across the corn stalks. Well, so technically our disc, it's a Landall 7431 VT. It is a vertical tillage tool. It's just the Landall's version, and I call it a disc because it looks like a disc because it is a disc. You can call it whatever you want. If you've got blades with a concave to them, it's a disc. I don't care if they're serrated. I don't care if they're change the gang angle and make it shallow. It's still a disc. So, technically, I don't know if it's technically. According to Landall, we do use vertical tillage, um, but it's a disc. Some 
some snow on Lake Odessa. Didn't stick though. Uh, tractor rides for everyone. Yep, right along. Hi from North Dakota. Four inches of snow in the teens. That sucks. Dennis, your your comments on all my videos are telling me how miserable things are in North Dakota make me very glad to not live in North Dakota. I hope things get better out there for you guys. Hello from Sweden. Driving a tractor, watching you driving a tractor. It's probably, yeah, it's 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 just bad when the monitor beeps start happening. And you're like, is that mine or the one I'm watching on the video? I do the same thing when I'm watching Zach's videos. Like, is that my monitor? Or his? Uh, how wide do you have it set for? How wide do I have what set for? Our corn head is 20 foot. It's eight rows, so we're 20 foot spacings. Uh, you're missing one O-ring kit at Berkey. Yes, we are kind of missing an O-ring kit at Berkey. The problem here is that we're here so infrequently and we just don't use stuff enough and an o-ring kit would end up being 10 years old and we've used two of them out of it and they all get dry rotted and you don't use them so with a john deere dealer that is two miles away tractor supply and every hardware store you could possibly want um four or five miles away in the opposite direction ah, it's hard to stock a lot of stuff that is on that off chance you might need it so hello from wisconsin we got snow coming later today Good evening from Finland. Sounds like you need another truck driver. Um, yeah, I mean, another truck driver would help. We might get done a day sooner, but it isn't It isn't that big a deal. Uh, it's not like I can hire somebody full-time because we don't have anything for them to do most of the time. And then those week or two a year that I could use some extra help and a truck driver or something that you know you don't find people for two weeks it's just it's not worth it for us we can manage we'll get stuff done it's not a big deal do you clutch when you go in and out of forward not on the tractor no I um, I can stop this tractor with just my brakes uh, IVT, you just hit the brakes, so when I'm unloading into the cart, I just do that. I do not hit the clutch. The whole, oh yeah, very rarely. So, we are going to get filled up with black corn here, and it's going to happen quick because this corn is so good. But, um, I got another truck to fill, and then we can fill up the cart, and maybe my Uncle Phil will be back. And we can load him up again with wet corn. We'll see. I don't know if Jack's going to empty this other truck for me. Looks like he's walking that way. So maybe, maybe we'll be able to keep going for a while. This truck's empty. We're going wide open. Move you back here. Maybe you can see better. I'll move the wiper out of your way. There you go. Going to clean up the equipment when you're done with harvest do you have to do it or do you have it done or do you do it by yourself people do that who does it who can i have do it for me 
Brock's gonna do it for me. No, uh, we do it all ourselves. Uh, I'll do a lot of it. Brock's gonna end up doing a lot of it. But that's what we do most of the winter. So we'll we'll try and power wash a lot of stuff here before it gets super cold and it's still warm enough the water doesn't freeze uh, and do what we can. But um, tractors and stuff usually it's you know as we bring them into the shop we try and wash them clean them up good change oils and service stuff throughout the winter um, so yeah but yeah I do that Brock does some um, dad does not do any hello from King George Virginia love your videos first thing I watch every morning thank you appreciate you watching Lots of new stuff. Yeah, that was a lot of new stuff. Man, I'm way behind in the comments. Uh, what do you think of the grain carts that unload from the other side? Yeah, I've seen those. The only advantage is, it, is that I'm looking to the same side as all my controls. But it's that's a huge risk with an auger folded out that way and the way that it lines up with the combine. And I'm not good enough to back up along the combine the whole length of the field, you know. And so, yeah, I, no, I don't want one. Sweet in. Holland, how many acres do you think you need to found GPS on the tractor? Fund? Starting a new farm in northern Sweden next year. I've followed you for one and a half years. I mean, it's one of those things that you don't have to have it, but once you have it, you have to have it. You're never going to want to farm without it. Uh, last year, there was a time when I ended. I was running the big tractor and it didn't have a GPS receiver on it and I forgot and I had to do like 40 acres and drive the whole thing by hand. I don't want to do that anymore. It was no fun. So, um, you know, yeah. I, I, how many acres? I don't know. It depends on what you're doing with it. Are you just talking auto steer? Are you going to do row shutoffs, section control for a sprayer, fertilizer, variable rate? All that stuff plays into it, but it all costs money. So, um, you know, there are reasonable systems out there that I, I don't think they're that expensive, I guess. Have you heard of any yield differences on Enlist versus Extend Flex in your area? I have not. Um, I had both in my plots. They were back and forth. There's no, I refuse to believe that there's yield drag with either the Enlist or the Extend Flex. And the companies that sell Extend Flex tell you the Enlist beans have yield drag and they're terrible. Companies that sell enlist means tell you that the Extend Flex have yield drag and they're terrible, and it's all BS. They're fine. There are differences in varieties, absolutely no doubt about it. But one platform versus the other doesn't make one bit of difference at all. Um, so, yeah, and I sell both. So I, I could care less what my customers plant. I'll sell them whatever they want. Doesn't matter to me. Uh, new auger. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, not an auger, conveyor, belt conveyor, but yes, and a new house. But the new house is kind of separate. It's not really a farm purchase. But yes, you're right. Those things add on too. It is free to subscribe. Thank you for pointing that out. Hello from Finland. Uh, do you use any pre-emergence in your bean ground? Yes, absolutely. We use a very good pre-emerge chemical in our bean ground. Um, I don't. It's not optional. You have to around here. Although there are people that don't, but I think you should. So yes, we do use a pre-emerge, corn and beans. And by pre-emerge, it means it's a chemical that we spray on before the beans come out of the ground that stops weeds from ever germinating. So instead of waiting for them to, to sprout and then trying to kill them with Roundup or some other chemical, um, you spray it onto the ground and it keeps, it prevents the seeds from germinating or sprouting or kills them right as they do. I don't really know exactly, but pre-emergence. Kills them before they emerge. I feel like this corn's getting better because his hopper gets fuller every time I come down here. Brian Brown has Agco test plots on their farm. That's how they get a lot of doubles. Yes, you are right. That is exactly right. Uh, only new thing in my dealer's lot is a few lawnmowers and some hay tools. Yeah, I, there's no new equipment around anywhere. Delivering a box blade while Dad and Brother ditch on my farm. Oh, Derek, yeah. You must be done with harvest if you're working in tiling, dude. Uh, I've always been told that North Dakota is God's country. Yeah, they say that, don't they? 
Do you rent more than you own? Uh, yeah, we probably rent more than we own. It's not a 50-50 split, but um, we own a fair amount, and by we, I mean the whole family, so it's there's a whole dynamic there, but um, yeah, we rent most of our ground. Oh, from Illinois, you need a service thing to bring the relevant parts and tools down there. Yeah, we've thought about that, talked about a service truck or something, but most of our ground is close. We do have tools and stuff here, so it's not like we can't work on stuff and fix it. Um, you know, and, and that O-ring that I, we're talking about was on this green cart. We had extra. I had them on the tractor so that I could fix it if I needed to. They just weren't the right ones exactly, so I wanted to run to the deer dealer and, and try and get one that matched up better, and I haven't had any trouble with it, so I think I did that. And I got extras, and they're in the tool in the toolbox on the tractor that if we have problems, I've got the tools and I can fix it, so it's fine. Uh, our new combine that was set to arrive June of 22 is now maybe for June of 23, unless we take a leftover 21 from a dealer in Texas who doesn't have the options we want. Oh, man, that's, that's hard, but I believe it. Impressive grain cart. Thanks, Derek. It is a pretty darn impressive grain cart. It's very nice. Derek's the guy that sold me the grain cart. Uh, nice view dumping in that trailer. Yeah. Uh -huh. Do the ladies of farm ever come out and help? Seems like it's only all the guys. Uh, no, not really. Uh, my mom never did much helping on the farm, the field work stuff. I mean, she cooks meals and does a lot of stuff. Don't get me wrong. She does a lot of stuff, but not in the operation side of it. Um, Phil's wife it ever has. My wife will come and ride occasionally, but no. Uh, I've never seen a farmer use windshield washer fluid to clean the windshield. Do tractors have windshield washer fluid? Yes, they do. Here's the problem and here's why you don't ever see it. One, the windshield wipers generally suck and they leave streaks. Two, unless you use a lot of windshield washer fluid, all you're going to do is turn the dust into mud and then it gets worse and streaky and smeary and you can't see anything. And three, the windshield washer things leak. So after you use them and they're primed and the hose is full and you stop the windshield wiper and then it keeps dripping and it drips and it drips and it drips and it makes dust stick to the dang window and it's frustrating and I hate it. And so no, we don't ever use windshield wiper fluid. Very rarely. Jacob, it's going well. Watching from Sweden. I don't know if the same person keeps commenting from Sweden, but that's like the third or fourth one from Sweden. Seems like the corn yields are a little higher this year. Do you think new to you and Hydras contributed to that? By the way, still best farming in Um, nah, maybe a little, but it's because we had good weather. Uh, our yields definitely are better this year than we've had before, uh, eh, for the most part. I don't know if it's our best ever yield, but we have very good crops. There's a lot of factors that went into that. The biggest one is weather that I can't control. Full truck. Sixty thousand on that one. All right. If you were to upgrade a tractor, what would you like to get? Um, something with tracks. 
Uh, what I like to get, I would love, love to get an 8RX. Um, I don't know if that's in the cards, but an 8RT of some sort, uh, probably in that 340 to 370 horsepower range, it would fit with what um, what we need. Do you fold and unfold the auger with the joystick or the tractor remote? I was running a buggy like yours this week and found the folding with the joystick really slow. Uh, so this is folded with a remote. I think on the bigger carts they have a five function remote joystick. This one is only a three function. Uh, it does not have the auger fold as a part of that. So, um, yeah. Would you try a right hand unloading grain cart? Uh, I'm with, yeah, I don't really see a need for that. Uh, the only nice thing is that it's on the same side as all the controls, but I know where all the controls are. I can reach my fingers out there and hit them and it doesn't help. I know what I'm doing. Did you ever get your ad money from YouTube? Any more problems with them? <laughs> so that's going back a long time. That goes back over a year. Um, I never did get any results or resolution from YouTube for last year, the last half of September or the month of October. Um, but starting November 1st last year, everything went back to normal and I have not had any problems with them since. So did I get that stuff? No, but um, I haven't had any trouble now for, for a year. So fingers crossed, they don't do it again. All equipment manufacturer is much more on demand and not so much on speculation. So there is an excess inventory. The manufacturer doesn't have to wait. Too risky for them to have any year with equipment not moving. Yeah, so that's mostly right and true. Manufacturers generally want stuff to be sold when they're building it, um, but dealerships can place stock orders and buy stuff for their lots. Um, yeah, depends on the ag environment stuff. Right now, I'd be surprised if there's much of anything being stock ordered just because they're selling equipment so fast and things are going so well and you can't get your hands on anything that yeah, there's no reason to leave it set on a lot. Look, there's a combine. Pretty sweet one, too. Okay, we're gonna stop here. Um, good afternoon. Be finishing Berkey today. Hope Brayson is well. Thanks, Mark. Brayson is doing much better. Uh, his brother was a little sick, but it's working its way through our household. Um, will we finish here today? I don't know. I don't know. We had about a little over 70 acres when we started. I don't know how much we've gotten done. We are moving through it, but uh, we're going to have a lot of bushels, and I don't know if we can get rid of them fast enough. When's the new 8RX coming? Yeah, it's, it's not yet. I would love to, but it's not there yet. France used to be dealer lots, had equipment ready to sell in quantities, not so much anymore. Yeah, that's true. I have an 8345RT. They're great when it's dry, but if you get any sort of wet or sloppy, you're going to struggle. I still think it would be good. What's your bin capacity? You may have answered that. Uh, so I have not answered that. Bin capacity, as far as the grain setup that we're unloading into here, um, we have, it's an older small system. We have one newer bin that's that big dryer one. That one holds about 20,000. Uh, the other dryer bin holds about 6,000. We have another one that's seven and then two 5,000 bushel bins. Uh, one of those fives has got beans in it and um, then we've got the overhead that's got uh, 3,000 capacity, so not enough to store everything that we can grow down here, not even close. Uh, that's why Phil's been busy hauling the last few days. He ended up hauling about 15,000 bushels of beans out, and uh, we'll do around 20 of corn. So, um, you know, it'd take another 50,000 of storage to be able to store everything down here. And we don't need to do that. I mean, we need to sell stuff in the fall for cash flow purposes anyway, so uh, not likely scenario to think about grain expansion here at Berkey or Waldron for that matter. We updated to a Brent 1500 on tracks. Love the long corner auger. Never have to turn your neck. It's right beside. You. Yeah that is the one thing about this cart is that the auger sits pretty far behind you when you're unloading the truck so you got to turn around to see it. It doesn't bother me. Maybe when I'm old it will. I know J&M's got a two auger cart like this that the auger comes out on an angle a little bit more. Um, that might be nice, but it's not something I've ever felt like I needed, so 
I don't know. It's fine. How likely is it you will expand your farm area at Walgren? I mean, we're not in a huge expansion mood or mode. Like, uh, we don't turn opportunities down. If somebody came to us and wanted us to rent their farm or something came up that we felt like we could and wanted to buy, we would certainly talk about it and do that if we could. But I'm not out looking for ground, actively like knocking on doors trying to find stuff. And there's a few reasons for that. Um, but the biggest being, I'm it in my generation, right? So my dad and Phil have kind of worked together and then I came on a few years ago and have helped to uh, expand things and grow the operation and, and we're doing enough for all of us right now. But as my dad and Phil get older and want to slow down and not do as much anymore, um, I, I, I've got to find some help to replace them or cut back on acres. And I, I don't really want to downsize. But at the same time, there's no reason to really expand right now. So, um, again, if an opportunity comes up, somebody comes to me and wants me to rent stuff, absolutely, we'll talk. Do I want to pick up a thousand acres for next year? <laughs> Not really. <coughs> do you apply any nitrogen in the fall or is it all in the spring? No, we do not put any nitrogen on in the fall that we don't have to. Um, in our phosphorus fertilizer, the map, there is a little bit of nitrogen. But we're putting that on for the phosphorus, not the nitrogen. We do on some wheat, we'll add a little bit of uh, AMS, ammonium sulfate, just because uh, the wheat needs some nitrogen in the fall, but not for corn. We are in a warm enough and wet enough environment. Any nitrogen I put on in the fall will not be there in the spring. We would lose it, it's not something we do. How come Phil drives trucks or do all swap? Um, Phil does most of the trucking. I do some farm to field stuff in the fall when I need to, but as far as hauling to town, especially into Toledo here, uh, Phil does all of that. I don't I don't go into Toledo with the trucks. I will go to our local elevator up to Waldron, but um, it's just kind of the job responsibilities we've had. Also added a backhoe. Yeah, Wolf, you're right. Oh, sorry. I forgot about that one. We traded backhoes as well. Dang, that's seven, eight, we're up to eight different pieces of equipment. We've done a lot. Uh, thoughts on farmers using farmland real estate investment companies? I have no thoughts on that. It happens, I feel like rent gets inflated and they pay way more than it was sustainable. And I think that's been proven that it's not sustainable. Um, but it is what it is. I, I don't know. When filling the cart on the go, who's responsible for maintaining position? Combine driver or, tra or tractor driver? Uh, cart driver. Definitely the tractor driver. So I say that, and that is true up until the point where you can no longer see in the cart because it's getting so full. And then you just kind of maintain your speed and let the combine driver fill it from there. But, yeah, I've, I've always had that opinion that um, the combine driver's got more stuff going on and they're busy focusing watching the corn and... Uh, the combine and making sure that's doing its job. It is the green cart driver's responsibility to make sure that we don't spill any corn or beans or whatever else. Now, if the combine is going to stop all of a sudden because of something happening or whatever, then different story. But all right, Phil is back, so we're going to load up his truck. He's got the tarp rolled. I don't know if he's going to get that. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go roll a tart. This truck is going to town, so we can't overload it.
receive for Roundup prices in your area? Well, I haven't really priced it lately, but I hear it's like 30 bucks a gallon or more. I don't know. We still got some in the barn left over. And uh, we bought some chemicals back in September for next year. Our uh, burn down that's a premix. It's got some glyphosate and a uh, dual in it. And uh, I think that was a very good move because we got it locked in pretty reasonable with factoring in what the price of each individual component would be. It would be like $15 roundup. That was a good price. A very good price. Um, you need a strip till bar like Zach. Two years of watching him go nuts. Yeah, I, we talked about this a little bit already, but I don't. I don't want something like he has. I want. Um, I want like a, a gladiator strip till bar, or uh, what's the other one I heard? Oh, uh, Brian uses that Underfirth one that that looks really good to me. I don't know. I would. I would like to try one. Does Phil have any children who farm? No, Phil does not have any children. So I have no cousins that are involved in the farm. Uh, what is your four wheel drive for a tractor? Our big tractor is a 9510R. Am I caught up? I think I'm caught up, almost. Why did your dad and uncle think of the YouTube thing when you started? Oh, uh, when I started, I don't think my dad was too impressed, uh, but he's come around to it. I. He's not crazy about being on camera too much yet. He started to tell a story the other day and I went to get my phone out and he's like, no. All right, so I've probably been pushing it a little too hard there. Phil, we don't talk about it. Uh, I don't, I don't, uh, Phil doesn't want to be on camera, which is fine, I'm not gonna put him on camera. And uh, I think he would rather keep things a little more private, but it'll be okay. Anything on the wheat field, the fire bug person? No, I haven't heard anything about that. I doubt I ever will, but nope. Uh, how long will the seed you treat keep and still germinate if stored properly? Uh, seed will keep for a long time. Soybeans are the only one that are a little bit questionable uh, to save from one year to the next, but nah, they, they're all, they're all um, pretty stable. As long as you store them right, they'll keep for a very long time. Um, do you farm more than Zach? Uh, I'm not exactly sure how much Zach farms. I think we farm just a little bit more, but when I started watching Zach before I did this, I basically watched his channel like, that is me. Like, I could be him, he could be me. We are the same. We have the same type of farm. We run a lot of the same equipment. We same sizes roughly it's uh, it's unbelievable how similar we are and um, yeah so pretty close then loading a truck i see many load the ramp portion first then the drum gate area what's the best way to load a truck front to back or back to front i don't know i don't i, I don't care that much um i just Depending on which side of the truck I'm loading it from, I start in the front or I start in the back and I work my way across. So the front hopper you're going to load the ramp first, the back hopper you're going to load it last. Or vice versa. Uh, hi from Minot, 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 whatever, North Dakota, I'm a retired farmer. Thanks for watching. How's the yields in this corn? Yeah, this corn has been pretty good. Uh, it was like 220 something the last I looked. Since I'm caught up on the comments, I'm gonna try something here in a second. Let's see if I can connect to his display on my iPad so you guys can see it. So I gotta turn my wireless hotspot on on my phone. It might tell you I'm reconnecting for a second. But I'll be right back. Okay, so that's on. So now I'm going to come over here to my iPad and see if I can connect to that. Second, there it is. Okay, now I should be able to go to my John Deere Op Center. <coughs> Would you 
rather run your VT or your field cultivator? I would pick the field cultivator almost every time. It's a much better tool. It does a better job. It doesn't handle residue though. Username. Password. Maybe. I don't know if that's my password or not. I don't have to enter it on my phone. Oh yeah, it went in. Sweet. Order your farms. Save. Uh, active equipment. 8R. No, not 8R. Not the 8R. I don't want the 8R. That's the one I'm in. I want the 9R. Or the combine. 8, 9, that's 780. There we go. RDA, remote display access. All right, you guys want to see this? Check this out. So it's connecting right now to the display in the combine. And Dad may in a second have to push a button. He may not. So usually it just goes. I don't think he. Uh, I don't think he actually has to push the button. Oh yeah, right there. Sweet. So that's what he can see on his monitor in the combine. There's the yield map. The grain tank is obviously empty because, well, we're unloading it right now. Settings. There's the current yield. Pretty dang good. Here's the yield for the round, 228. Field average, 227.8. 228 bushel corn. That's, that's, holy crap, that's awesome. And we've got about 24 and a half acres done, not quite 25. So we're a third of the way there. That's so cool that I can see that. I've also got this camera in the side uh, grain cart so that I can see towards the back there so we can watch the, the corn going in. This is my monitor. We could also connect to that one, but that'd be pointless. But I'm on, only using that for the auto steer right now, so it's not really documenting or doing anything. We're just using it to drive straight lines. And then that one there on the uh, armrest for the tractor. All the tractor functions and stuff. Then we've got radio. This is the box for the grain cart. All that stuff. So I think I just saw somebody ask, do you try to stay in the same tracks when driving in the field to the truck? For the most part, except for I'm always driving next to the corn, right? So the next pass. But I stay in the same tracks that the combine has been in. Putting you back. Alright, what else? What did I miss there? Too rough. Can't read it. Do you see big differences in corn stock health this year? Yeah, yes, yes and no. I mean, we are seeing differences. A lot of it is... Um, whether it got sprayed with a fungicide or not. Um, varieties make a big difference. Some of the stuff's going down a little bit, but nothing's been terrible. I'm not entirely sure if I have enough to fill this truck or not. It's lower down. Close. All right, I got to get my display connected back to the uh, grain cart network so that it records my loads. Give me a second. You harvest. Yeah, yeah, I know. There we go. So I need just 19,000. Oh yeah, we got plenty. We got 27,000. So this will all this will fill that truck. Our dryer was done. It looks like they're trying to get it reloaded. Fill and jack.
expertly and precisely loaded to exactly the legal weight. Trust me. All right, Dan's working some end rows up here between the uh, couple of building sites here, so we're gonna just hang out for a second, make sure he can make it. He should be able to make it back pretty easily, I think. Hi from France. Uh, Nathan, when they speak of 120 day corn, how is the 120 measured? Where is the start time and what is the end? I don't know. I've always kind of wondered that. What is 120 day corn or 110 day corn mean? Uh, reality is it means heat units. There's a, uh, there's a range of heat units to maturity that is tied to those um, days. And I don't know if it actually is 120 days from planting to maturity or emergence to, I don't even know if those numbers are even close to right. I mean, 120 days would be four months, right? So April, say you planted corn the 15th of April, May, June, July, August would be 120 days. And that corn's not going to be mature in August. Oh, I got to go up there. So I don't know. I don't know what that 120 means. Put his auger out, but I think it was just to get around the barn. Uh, I didn't want to hit the building with the auger. I see. Yeah, I figured that out after a second. Uh, are you hoping your boys will get older, they'll be in your operation? I mean, that's kind of the hope and the dream, right? But I'm not going to force it. I'm not going to push them that way. Um, I know how it was for me growing up, and, and I'm here. So I think if I just kind of do the same thing, that at least one of them will probably end up farming with me. Uh, I think that would be a lot of fun, but it is what it is. If they want to farm, they're welcome to do so, and I hope to have the opportunity for them to be able to come back and do that. Uh, if they don't, they want to do something else, that's okay too. How many acres do you think Larson's Farms is? I don't know, they won't tell you. That's a big guarded secret at Larson Farms. Um, you can kind of guesstimate based on their equipment and stuff, but in my opinion, they seem to be a little overpowered for the number of acres I think they're running. Um, but they got to get stuff done, and Minnesota's a whole different ball game than Ohio and Michigan. So I'm not real sure, um, but I would guess they're probably in that seven to ten thousand range. Purely a guess. I don't know. That may be high for the number of combines they're running, but some of their other tractors and equipment they're running, it seems like it's awful lot. But I'm just not sure. Uh, asking a farmer how many acres they have is like asking, yeah, kind of. I don't care that much, I'll tell you. I mean, we farm a little over 3,000 acres. You're not gonna, you're not, you're not gonna do much with that information, so. In the open field, why don't you leave the grain tank spout extended on the cart? Because there's too much crap to hit. There's no, no, absolutely not. I do not, will not. You gonna unload here? I think he's gonna unload here. Okay. And just stay still. Okay. There's, there's, there's too much risk. Um, yeah. No, Phil, I was talking to Dad. Um, and on most of our fields up to water, and we have trees and such. And nope. So we fold the auger. I'm a, I'm a fold the auger every time, no matter what kind of guy, uh, grain cart and combine. Greetings from Mount Pelier. Hi, Jason. Thanks for joining. Derek, Dad and I changed the combine settings from the grain cart tractor this week. He thought that was handy. Mom was running the combine. Nice. Yeah, I did that. Uh, <laughs> funny enough, back when we were running double crop beans and I let Brock drive the new combine doing that, um, I was kind of watching stuff and riding in the buddy seat with him and sitting there and I didn't like how things were 
looking a little bit and I wanted to adjust it and it was easier for me to do it on my phone and adjust the combine sitting next to him than it was for me to explain to him how to adjust the combine. So I just did it that way. Wow, that worked pretty well. Larson's in the 6,000 acre. Yeah, that, I, I would believe that. Making some dollars this year, give it all back next spring. Yeah, pretty much. Fertilizer prices. Good job to Jack on getting the truck fixed over. Yeah, absolutely. Jack did a great job fixing our truck. If you haven't watched that this week, uh, we had a radiator hose. Uh, well, it was the, the plastic piece the hose attaches to broke, and we were leaking antifreeze, so he got a new radiator put in. Um, that happened on Monday or Tuesday, and he got it put back together yesterday, so that's awesome. Shout out. Life between the rows. There you go. Uh, if the load is not legal weight, does the elevator do anything? Guessing you're just worried about the cops. No, the elevator doesn't care. They'll, they'll unload whatever. But you got to get there. And we are literally uh, right outside of Toledo. We're in the suburbs area. Uh, Sylvania, Maumee, uh, Monclova, all of those areas that he's driving through. Uh, getting on I-475, heading south, going down some main roads, so we try and be as legal as possible. All the time, every time. Okay? But especially when we're on the main roads in Toledo. Uh, DOT can audit the scale tickets if I recall. Uh, maybe. I don't know if they can do that or not. Elevator doesn't care. Will your sister help the farm after school? I don't know. She's, um... She's still working on a job for next summer. She's uh, gotten a position with a, a company out of Indiana, and uh, that's gone pretty well for her. So um, I, I, she's still figuring out what she wants to do. If she wanted to help out and farm, she's welcome to do so. I just she's never has, and so I don't. I don't think she would mind the business side of it and the planning and the you know the, the figuring out how to do everything uh, from a, a management standpoint. I don't think she wants to do the everyday work. I don't think she wants to put the hours in doing this, driving a grain cart and a tractor. I don't think she wants to run a power washer and do this, that kind of stuff. And that's fair, she, she doesn't have to. She's perfectly qualified and smart enough to get a job doing something where she doesn't have to do that, so. What about your cover crop two-way mix? How does it look? It looks great. The radishes didn't get a ton of size to them, uh, which is expected with us planting it a little bit later. But they, they're pretty thick. They filled in really nice. I think that's going to work out really well. Please keep that snow down by you. Yeah, I don't want it here either. Who is uh, your seed dealer? Do you know of any good dealer that have a little experience with them? I'm not sure if that's a joke or not because of your ha-ha's at the end of that, Alan. But, uh, yeah, I am our seed dealer. Uh, I sell for Golden Harvest. And so, yeah, I, I know a dealer that has a little bit of experience, especially... Uh, experience planting their products that they sell and they can pick you the good stuff anybody needs some seed hit me up so how many acres do you guys run a little over 3,000 I already just said that Andy watching from West Unity do you have rain sleet this morning yeah we did at Waldron but we're down east we're uh, we're towards Berkey right now and just enough to keep us from Joseph Planta. yeah it, it looked pretty sloppy up to Waldron there Said you won't get a 12 row head, how about a four row? Well, a four row wouldn't fit on the combine, so that's a problem too. Uh, eight row's kind of the sweet spot of where it's at. If you took the duels off, you could run a six row, I suppose, but I don't really want to do that either. Mike Mitchell is 40,000 plus acres, that's insane. Yeah, but that's a whole different world up in Canada. Whole different ball game when you're doing the crops they're doing and the type of ground they're on and everything. Um, you know, that's, yeah, that's huge, but it's not the same. How much has propane increased in cost since last fall? I couldn't tell you exactly. I know that I just filled up that tank that we got set, and it cost me $220 a gallon, and I thought that was outrageous. Um, the dryer gas we've been getting down here, I think, was like $1.35. So it's definitely up. The neighbors know how much you farm anyway, so no point in keeping it a secret. All right, pretty much. The only thing is if they ask you how many bushels you got and what you sold it for. Yeah, that's, that's what you really need is the bushels and the price. And you guys get a close enough look at that as it is. And I don't tell you what our total yields are, but you see a lot of fields and uh, you don't see the marketing side of it very much. 
Can you use dryer down dryer as wet bin or do you need as a dry bin? Um, I suppose it would be feasible to run it as a wet bin, but we're down to like 50 acres of corn. We're not setting up a wet bin now, so. And we're going to fill it with dry corn. We're just going to run stuff through it and not actually use it to dry. We'll transfer out of the other one and fill it up. Yeah, did the rain that went through there yesterday hit you or miss the fields? Looking a little drier. We did get a little bit of just some sprinkles and stuff. It never really rained. I don't know that it accumulated anything or added up to anything. Hello, like your channel. Good to see a farm from Michigan. Keep watching. Uh, and do you watch Kip Sigler? Uh, I do not watch Kip. I've heard of his channel. I have not watched it. You haul the Andersons. Yes, all this stuff is going to the Andersons and Maumee. Does your new Draper platform work better than your old 640FD? Um, I don't know if there's a huge performance upgrade from the actual, you know, running through the field. The short divider points are really nice because it, the way you can turn in the crop and not knock stuff down is bad. Obviously, it came with a new cutter bar and everything, so that's nice. It cut cut really well. Um, the center feed drum is nicer and the, the wider belts. You can tell that things feed in a little bit better. I mean, the Draper was already pretty awesome in the way that it feeds in. This one, they just improved it a little bit. So, um, yeah, I would say that it runs better. Sure. Can't wait to see progress on the farm all. Yeah, I know, me too. I just am not real optimistic. Howdy, how much left to go? Andy, welcome. Thanks for joining uh, Farm and Fix and Fabricating there. Um, we're down to uh, somewhere around 400 acres total to go here. So about 50 in this field, and we head back to our other farm, 35 miles west of here. Uh, hopefully we'll get a bunch done this next week. It'll be better up there where we can use our big wet bin and the fast dryer. And a lot of it is really close, so that will help as well. Um, we should be able to, to cover it quickly. I may have missed 100 acres up there. Maybe we got 460 up there. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, Michigan 7, Penn State 6 at the half. Ah, come on, Penn State. That's why we're doing this now, because nobody cares about Michigan football, so we'll do it. We'll do a live stream during their game, so we're done before the Michigan State and Ohio State play later. All right. Uh, stood up, drove the combine all day. Now I'm sitting in my bed watching somebody harvest. <laughs> it's, it's a good thing. You just do what you got to do. We already got some snow. You think the chicken manure is helping a lot? Yeah, I do. We got one of the fields we got up the Waldron yet is one that we put chicken litter on last year, and I'm really interested to see what it does because um, it's also a hybrid that hasn't been as great this year in the plots, but I think it's going to be pretty good corn. We did spray it with a fungicide, so I'm expecting big things out of that field, um, and we'll, we'll see. I have something else to compare it to. Nathan, how are the dryers running? Well, Ron. Uh, the big dryer down here to Berkey is running just fine. The other one, not so much. We've got electrical issues. Watch the video that I posted this morning and you'll see more about it. We're going to have to we're gonna have to do some electrical maintenance before next year. Thoughts about upgrading to a haggy sprayer to apply fungicide on corn? Yeah, thoughts about it. We have had thoughts about it. Um, the problem is our sprayer now is not wore out. It's in good shape and to trade is going to be a big chunk of money. Um, I feel like a tractor is probably first before a sprayer, but that is something I would consider. Uh, but I can hire it done for 10 bucks an acre, which is not cheap, but not terribly expensive. And you just gotta, it's a balance of when you do that kind of stuff. So yes, we have talked and thought about it. Do you know Clark Custom Cornheads? Would you recommend it? I do not. That's not a brand I'm familiar with, Clark. I've seen Capellos and uh, Dragos and lots of different aftermarket. Clark is not one that I'm familiar with. Uh, we forgot to fold it one night. Tried to forget about it and then hit a railroad bridge in Waldron. Your dad don't remember the bridge. Good heavy you had to fold it. Yeah, going back to the folding the auger every time conversation. Uh, 140, yeah, I'm only a few minutes behind, all right. 
Anderson's painted a huge sunflower on their concrete silos over the summer. Looks amazing. I heard about that or I saw it on the news or something. You guys thought about planting green sorghum? Milo, love your channel. Nope. I have not ever considered planting that. It's not something grown around here. Uh, I have no market for it. There is somebody, uh, in fact, uh, Andrew Hasnick, Hasnick Farms, who I've mentioned a few times on the channel, they grow some canola, which is rare for Michigan and uh, something that's kind of interesting. Someday I'm going to have to go up and tour their farm. Check it out. Thought about adding more storage. Grain storage? Not really. Um, we added a bunch up to Waldron and did a lot of grain storage projects over the last 10 years. And so we're kind of good where we're at right now and not looking to expand, let's say, uh, that side of it. Have you thought about adding more storage? And if you ask the question, I will answer it, I promise. You don't have to ask it five times. Andy, any snow up there? Yeah. You guys talking to each other, you're going to make me fall, lose my spot in comments. That's okay, it's good. Worm castings are expensive, but effective as fertilizer. Yeah, we just grow the worms. There's lots of worms in our ground. One of the things Dad was noticing later this uh, f summer or early fall was uh, the ground that was cover crop last year that we planted into no-till this spring, stale seedbed kind of, seemed to have a lot of worm castings and stuff and you could really tell um, the ground was clean. There was very little residue on it. The worms have been going to work, doing their job. Tired of watching the circle yet? Unload the combine, go unload into the truck. Back and forth all day. Oh, spilled some more. I blame the truck. It's the same truck, it's the little one. It fills up too fast. Probably gonna wrap this up pretty soon, just FYI. Uh, we like 80 acres of harvest left. 2021 currently on a rain delay. Get her done, man. Denmark, do you see opportunity for first generation farmers in today's market? Um, hold on. What's up? Is there enough in there to fill the dryer? How much do you need? From what happens to another truck? I had, I had most of that other truck load. Yeah. It's 34,000 I put on there. Well, should be. Uh, hey Jack, if there's not, just pull a little out of the overhead. Sweet. Um, first generation farmer. Yeah, um, it's hard. It's no doubt. You aren't going to start an operation like we have just all overnight not going to happen and so um, you know if you wanted to start farming niche markets finding something small scale that you can do and make a living on custom work finding a farmer that doesn't have any kids that wants some help <laughs> easier said than done um, there are opportunities there absolutely are but it's not easy ha ah, who are you going to cheer for always when OSU plays Michigan yeah that's a tough one for me every year, and usually my answer is I cheer for whoever has the most to lose, right? So in basketball, usually Michigan State is better and they have the most to lose, and um, in football, usually it's Ohio State that's better and has the most to lose, and I think that's going to be the case this year. Uh, Ohio State is in the playoff hunt. Michigan State, I suppose they would be if they won out, but... Um, yeah, if everything being equal, I usually default to Ohio State. So, but the way I see it, 
you know, before last week anyway, my two teams were at the top of the keep in the Big Ten and, and in the best position to make the playoff. They probably still are, but um, yeah, losing to Purdue not not good. That hurt. Uh, we were up in the phone playing 22 inch rows for beats and everything else. Would you look at that, I assume? Yeah, so 22 inch rows are really uncommon here. I know they use them in Sugar Beet World. Uh, one of my neighbors and seed customers bought a 22 inch row planter they used for soybeans. It came from Sugar Beet Country. Um, I actually think 22 inch rows would work really well because I think you could use 16 inch tracks and still get down the rows and uh, do some in crop work with them better than 20 inch rows. Uh, but I don't know if we would ever go to that route or not. Uh, we're, we're, we, farmers tend to be hard to convince to change things, myself included, but especially my dad and uncle. So, unlikely. Live just south here on Defiance. Thanks for joining. Manure really helps soil health. Yes, it does. Tons of canola growing around where I come from, processing plant in the region. Actually, a few something. Yeah, cool. Uh, our channel is great. Thank you. I do not watch Kip Sigler. Chumley, are you Chumley from Pawn Stars? I doubt it. So farmers up at the thumb went to 22 inch rows for beets. Would you consider? Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Projected date on moving for the house end of January. Anyone else from Michigan Farms here? I blame the cart driver. It's usually the cart driver's fault. That come out of your pay. Yeah, that's built. <coughs> it was probably about two dollars worth of corn though, so it'll be okay. Just keep the goals from eating the worms during tillage. Yeah, there is that. Uh, very hard. Brothers took over family farm, made it into something. Brothers had to be very diverse, dairy beef crops. What else did they, talents did they have? Are we talking about your brothers? Yeah, I assume so. Before you close, why not remind subscribers to hit the like and subscribe button? Well, that's a very good point, Mark Twain. 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 Yeah, we'll go with that. Uh, thanks. So please hit that like button on this video and all of my videos. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I would really, really appreciate it. That helps me grow. I'm trying really hard. Kind of. I'm trying. Maybe not really hard, but I'm trying to get to 20,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I was all set to come on this live stream and tell you how we were going to do it and get to 100,000 today. So why don't we just do that instead? Let's forget about 20,000 and just go right to 100,000. Deal? I mean, there's 327 of you watching. If you all hit subscribe, I'm sure we'll get to 100,000. That's how it works, right? Anyway. Yeah, please do. Combine most of the corn this year from 37 to 40%. Oh, that's brutal. That's no good. Brock! for the thoughts and prayers. Yeah, Brock, thanks for joining us. Hope you're doing all right, man. Uh, if you guys didn't see this morning's video, Brock's grandpa passed away this week, and I think they had a funeral today, so he's been gone all week, and that's that's fine. So thanks for joining the live stream, Brock. Are you going to have good business content coming yet? I don't know what you mean by that. The farm business, but your own business. I mean, my seed business stuff. Yeah, I talk about that. Awesome live stream. All right, we are caught up to live. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hit that like button, subscribe. Go watch this morning's video if you haven't seen it yet. There's another one coming tomorrow. We ended it this way, so we're going to go out this way. Is that is that how the snapping thing works? We're just we're done. We got a live stream done, just like that. Thanks, everybody. See you later.